Soon, the McLaren and the Porsche were ready for some shakedown laps. And for these, we decided we'd drive each other's cars. Straight away, I can tell you that this doesn't have the brutality or the savagery of the McLaren. Because it has rear wheel steering and four wheel drive, it feels secure and safe. And that gives you the confidence <laughs> to play about. If I went round this corner this fast in the McLaren, a lot of poo would come out. An unforgiving P1. My nerves were shot to pieces, but I too was falling in love. 903 horsepower! Oh my god! Oh, you bad, bad, naughty car! Jesus! This recalibrates your mind. I didn't think anything could be as exciting as that Porsche, but this, this is. This is brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Oh, what a car. I love it. Well? This is rubbish. I was just thinking exactly the same about this. Where are you? This was boring me to death. It was like being stuck in a Victorian woman's novel. But I'd rather that than being stuck in a telephone box with a panicking gorilla. Rubbish. It was trying to kill me. I mean, it's no, it's... to hurt me. It wants to hurt oh, me. That's why I like it. This is a missionary position car. Razor blade in the hands of a surgeon, sickle in the hands of a drunk peasant. Downton Abbey, Breaking Bad. That's crystal meth, that's some iffy weed. Fine wine, crate of Nuki Brown. Schooner of sherry, absinthe. James Bond, specifying his martini to be shaken, not stirred. Begs being train spotting, lobbing a pint pot over his shoulder in a nightclub and starting a bar fight. What? Hi. What are you doing here? I am here because, gentlemen, I have in the back of that lorry something that will make your McLaren and your Porsche look like lumps of yesteryear. sort of thing gave me a fizz like the Ferrari, the Ferrari. This has 950 horsepower, 950. More than either of the other two, and it's lighter. It weighs 1,250 kilograms, which is less than most hatchbacks. 
Actually, there is a bit more to the Ferrari, the Ferrari, because what it has is, in effect, a Formula One curse system. It constantly recovers energy that would otherwise be lost using its electric motor and its battery. So as I brake there, the car is actually saying, that energy, I'll have that. Straight. This is what 950 horsepower feels like. James was obviously talking nonsense, but there's no getting around the fact that these three cars take automotive science to a new level. They use the latest green technology to squeeze as much speed as possible from every molecule of fuel. As a result, they're all capable of blasting way past 200 miles an hour whilst producing fewer harmful emissions than a family saloon. What we have here, then, are three incredible machines which, at a stroke, have made the traditional supercar look wooden and old-fashioned. Welcome, everyone, to the Hypercar Holy Trinity. In that door mirror, I have a one million pound Porsche. In that door mirror, I have a one million pound Ferrari. What a toy box today. But before we ended up in a three million pound crash, we decided to start the tests to see which of the cars was best. I came up with the first one mainly to annoy gate crasher May. Let's make the first test a drag race using electrical power only. Good idea. No, it isn't a good idea. Why not? Because you can't drive the Ferrari on electrical power only. No! No, but of course you can't, because it's, it's a curse system, like a Formula One car. It's got a V12 engine and an electric motor, but they're all integrated. They work together all of the time. You can't separate them. You should have thought about that, shouldn't you? Bad planning. With James reduced to the role of onlooker, we lined up the P1 and the 918 on the start line. But then, instead of revving the petrol engines, we shut them down. That is weird. Preparing to start a drag race in complete silence. I still have two electric motors that together produce 285 brake horsepower, which is 109 more than the one electric motor in his McLaren. 
Oh yeah. You've got to love that. The immediate power from an electrical engine. That is 70 miles an hour already, and it, it, it isn't enough. <laughs> who, who won that? It was me, wasn't it? Yeah, but it's not important, though, is it? Is it not? No, it's just not relevant. Right. Right. In a drag race, it's irrelevant which car gets there first. Yeah, yours is the better milk float. <laughs> Back in the pits, Hammond had an idea for the next test. We've got to drive to the hotel, yeah, haven't yeah. we? It's about an hour away, and it gives us a chance to see what they're like on the road. That's a good point. Real world. That is a good point. I can't do that. I can't... Well, I can't drive the Ferrari on the road. Why? Well, it's not registered. It is, it's got number plates. No, no, just, that's just pretend number plates. If they register it, it becomes second-hand and they have to pay the tax. That's why it came in a lorry. So you can't drive it on the road either? Nobody can drive it. It's not road legal. Yet. Oh, no. Mate, that's... Oh, oh that is such, such a shame. It's an hour of... Oh, sorry, James. That is, that's really a rotten bit of luck, because you've come a long way from Italy. I can't give you a lift, because there's, like, the Sandman's headphones on the seat and the oh, mixer. Oh, no. Turns so, out no, there's literally nothing I can do. Soon, Richard and I were enjoying the world's best ever commute. It may be a bit sparkling here, but it's unbelievably comfortable. Because it uses electronics rather than traditional anti-roll bars. And that means there's no physical connection between the wheels. So if one goes over a bump, the others aren't affected. It's uncanny. It's like being in a Rolls-Royce Phantom. It's a lovely evening, taking the roof panels out, set the aircon just so, and I'm enjoying a drive in the country. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> 